Hi, in previous lecture I discussed adjacent matrix representation and adjacent list representation. In today lecture I will discuss depth first search. First understand what is the meaning of depth first search. Depth means go deeper. First means which come earlier is called as first. Then search. We are searching some element. Suppose this is a graph. Then in depth for search, after one we will visit four. After four we will visit two. After two we will visit five. So that we are going deeper. We are going in a sequence. The strategy followed by depth for search is to search deeper. That's why the name is depth for search. Depth for search explore edges out of the most recent discovered vertex B that still has unexplored edges leaving it. Like suppose from 1 which are unexplored, 2 and 4 are unexplored. So after 1 from its adjacent either it will visit 2 or it will visit 4. So every time it will just visit one of its adjacent that is not visited or that is not explored. Once all of these edges have been explored, the source backtracks to explore edges leaving the vertex from which B was discovered. Suppose this is one vertex, from this we will visit another vertex, from this we will visit another vertex. Finally it is a dead end, means after this vertex no adjacent left, this is a dead end. Then we will go to backtrack and check any of the adjacent of this vertex is left or not. Suppose one vertex is there, then we will visit that. And when it will be dead end, again we will go backtrack and we will check is there an adjacent of this vertex left. If there is an adjacent, then we will visit that. So we will backtrack to explore edges leaving the vertex from which B was discovered. This process continue until we have discovered all the vertices that are reachable from the original source vertex. If any undiscovered vertices remain, then depth for search select one of them as a new source and it repeat the search from that source. Suppose this is one graph. There are two components. This is one component. It is another component. First, we will do depth for search of this part. After that from this part we will consider any vertex as source. Let me start this vertex as source then from this vertex again I will repeat the process and I will visit all the vertex. So the graph may be connected or not connected accordingly we will do. If it is not connected every part we need to do, every component we need to do. The algorithm repeats this entire process until it has discovered every vertex. It also uses two timestamp, one timestamp for discover time and another timestamp for finishing time. When it will visit first time that is called as discover time, at that time it will add a timestamp. And when it will finish visiting, when it will visit for the last time, at that time it will add another timestamp that is called as finishing timestamp. So each vertex V has two timestamp, the first timestamp V dot D. D for discovery, record when B is first discovered and the second timestamp B dot F, F for finishing, records when the search finish examining which adjacent list and these timestamp are integer between 1 to 2 B, B for vertices, since there is one discovery event and one finishing event for each of the V vertices, so for every vertex u, u dot d will be less than u dot f. Means discovery time will always be less than finishing time. As every vertex will be discovered once and every vertex will be finished once. Every vertex u has been assigned a discovery time u dot d and a finishing time u dot f. We also use a stack to trace the operation of depth first search. In stack we can do two operations, one is push and another is pop. At which time we will push and at which time we will pop. During the discovery time we will push and during the finishing time we will pop. We push a vertex onto a stack when the vertex is reached for the first time called the discovery time. And we pop a vertex of the stack when it become a dead end called as finishing time. 
so we'll push a vertex during discovery time and we'll pop a vertex during finishing time we'll also add timestamp for discovery that is u dot d and for finishing u dot f suppose a tree is given and we'll do the first search from the root that is same as pre-order traversal let's discuss dfs algorithm what will be input one graph will be given it may be directed or undirected what will be output will visit all the vertex will traverse all the vertex that will be our output so mark each vertex in b with zero as mark of being unvisited so initially we will mark every vertex as zero zero means it is unvisited it is not visited and count will be zero count is a variable that will assign a zero for each vertex b in v so this is a vertex this is set of vertex so for each vertex v belongs to v do if v is marked with zero then dfs v so we'll call the function dfs v let's describe the dfs function dfs v so in function dfs will visit recursively all the unvisited vertex connected to vertex v by a path and number them in the order they are encountered by a global variable count it is talking about this variable so what will be count number that will assign to that vertex so count will be count plus one mark b with count every time count value will be increased for each vertex w in b adjacent to v do if w is marked with 0 dfs w let me explain it with the example that you can understand let's take a small graph so this is a graph having four vertex initially we'll mark each vertex in v with 0 so let me mark 0 and we'll take count equals to 0 count i'm writing as c for each vertex v in v to if v is marked with 0 so you can start with any vertex as source let me start from a so dfs a now count will be count plus 1 so count will be increase mark b with count now this a count a number will be 1 for each vertex w in b adjacent to v to if w is marked with 0 now which vertex are adjacent to a one is b another is d and if they are marked as 0 both are marked as 0 now you can do dfs w so you can choose any of b and d as w so let me do dfs b means from a i visit b so again i will call here dfs b count will be count plus one previously it was one now it will be two and i will mark here two now b adjacent is c that is marked with zero so i can call the function dfs c now count value will be increased count will be three previously it was two and i will mark here three then for each adjacent of c which are marked as zero c adjacent is d that is marked as zero so i can call the function dfs d now count will be increased count will be four next check any of the adjacent of d which is marked as zero no all adjacent are number d adjacent is a and c all are number so it travels in this sequence a b c d all vertices marked with number there is no vertices marked as zero so means all are visited so this is all about the dfs algorithm initially all are marked zero by the time we visit we'll increase the count and we'll assign that number to that vertex from that count also you can find the sequence like one two three four first we visit the, whose number is one next two next three next four like this now what will be time complexity for adjacency matrix representation the traversal time is theta of number of vertices square and for adjacency list representation it is theta of number of vertices plus number of edges so it depends on graph representation if graph is in matrix representation then running time will be theta of v square if graph is in adjacency list representation then it will be theta of v plus e 
In next lecture, I'll discuss some more properties of DFS, its example and its application. If this lecture is helpful for you, please like and subscribe. Thank you.